Hi everyone, this week we continue our exploration of converting list functions into functions over length indexed vectors. So this is a continuation of a series, this is the third in the series, and through this series we're going to look at and understand how we can, how, how we can use type level programming um, uh, a little bit more. So already we've seen how a GADT can help give us better type safety by writing functions like, where is it? Uh, like head that only works over non-empty vectors and map that returns the same length of vector that it takes in. And then last week we saw how singletons can be used to give a precise type for length and to be able to implement replicate. Without singletons we can't implement replicate at all. So we're gonna continue this week with type families because the next sequence of functions that we need to define all require type families. So let's take a look at append. Append is the easiest of this bunch. So, well, let's think about the type of append. So we're gonna take two vectors. Um, let's just say we have vec and a to vec and a to vec something a. But already we've actually made a small mistake here, right? Because I wanna be able to append two vectors of different lengths, right? Right now, the way this is written, because I have n here twice, that means that these have to be the same length. So I don't want that. I want one to be n and one to be m. And well, what's the output length? Well, the output length has to be the sum of n plus m. So that's what I'm gonna write there. Now, even if I don't put in any useful definition here, so here, oh, oh, I need type operators. Of course I need type operators. Um, by the way, the code that I'm working in, at the end of the video, it's gonna be um, posted up on GitHub. There's gonna be a link in the description. Um, so we have type operators here, and not in scope, type constructor or class plus, right? So we have plus over normal values, but we don't have plus over type. So we need to define a type family to just say exactly what type means over these naturals that we use at compile time. So I can just write this. So we're gonna have type plus, I'm gonna give a standalone kind signature, so I like to, so this is nat to nat to nat. Um, and what is it gonna be? A plus B where zero plus B is B and suck A plus B is suck A plus B, okay. So hopefully, oh, now we need more stuff, more type families. Oh, now what? Oh, variable not in scope, undefined. Well, let's just import undefined just to get rid of that. Great, okay. Um, so let's see, where were we? We were down here. So now we have, now this type makes sense, but does the definition make sense? Um, so let's see, we're gonna have zero, oh, not zero, what am I saying? Nil appended onto any vector v, well, that's just v, and if we have x cons x's appended onto some vector v, that's just x cons onto x's append v. Aha, and it works. Um, so here, as always, the types are working really strongly for us. If I make a mistake, um, let's say I forgot to cons on x, then I get errors. Right? We've seen this in previous weeks. We're not even gonna look very closely at the error here. Um, what's more interesting is to actually pay a little bit more attention to the types in this example. So I said that this takes a vec n a and a vec m a and produces a vec n plus m a. And there's no magic going on here. I think that's, a, that's sort of a critical point to make is, that, is, is the way that these types work. So what happens on this first case is we learn this, on this pattern match on nil, what we really learn is that n is zero in this case. I'm just gonna use normal, no, normal numbers over here, numerals. And so once we learn that n is zero, then that means that n plus m is really the same thing as zero plus m. And zero plus m, I see up here, that's really the same as m. And so when I say that I'm producing a vec ma, so the result here is a vec ma, and well, the input, the thing I return, v has type vec ma. So that works out nicely. Here, I learned that n is really suck of n prime, right? That's what pattern matching on this cons tells me. Uh, let me see if I can get another little thing here so we can see the definition of vec. I think that can be helpful. There it is, right up there. Um, so here, when I pattern match on this cons, I know that my result here is suck n. Well, I'm gonna rename things a little bit. So this becomes suck n prime, so that the result is really the same thing as n here, right? We have to, we have to rename it because this n up here is not the same as this n down here. 
So once I know that n is suck of n prime, well then n plus m is really the same thing as suck of n prime plus m, and then I can use this second equation defining plus to reduce, and so that's just the same thing as suck of, oops, suck of n prime plus m, and uh, what I have here is this x is plus plus v. Well, what type does that have? So x is plus plus v, that's going to have type, well, the type of x's is vec n prime. The type of v is still vec m. So this is going to have type vec n prime plus m a. And so then when I cons onto it, well, when I cons onto something, I take the length of the vector I'm consing onto and I add one to it. So that gives me the suck n prime plus m that I wanted. So I said there's no magic here. What I really meant is that if I just change this to be m plus n, that looks like it should be the same. Plus is normally commutative. And now if I try to compile, I get all kinds of errors. And that's because this analysis here doesn't work, right? I've learned about n. And that means that I can normally, uh, before making that change, I could reduce this type family because I learned about the first argument to plus. Well, now I've switched this plus around. So when I learn about n, I learn about the second argument to plus, but plus doesn't know how to reduce just when its second argument is known about. So what I've actually done here is it's a little bit of a sleight of hand, right? The only reason that plus plus works so well and so nicely is because the structure of defining plus and the structure of defining list append is really the same structure. Um, so I need to take this back to n plus n, and then now we're back we're back in in, in good standing it's good standing here. Um, okay, let's let's look at one more function. I think we'll have time for one more function. Let's look at take. Um, so take allows me to take a prefix of some some vector. So normally on lists I would define it something like this. Um, and let's actually write out the whole definition. So take of zero, and then it doesn't really matter what this is. That's just going to return an empty list. If I take of some other number that's greater than zero, and here we'll have x cons x's, that's just x cons down to take n minus one of x's. All right, so hopefully that compiles. Oh, we don't have int in scope. I suppose if we can add int in scope without causing too much harm. Um, Oh, and now minus is not in scope. Well, let's just take all of none and put that in scope too. Um, okay, pattern matches are non-exhaustive. That's because this is an int, and I haven't said what happens on negatives. Let's not worry about that. Or wait, no. Oh, that's because ah, that's because I don't know. I haven't said what happens if I have a number here and I have an empty list. So that's that's actually a very important case. So if I say take n with the empty list, well, that's just the empty list, right? That's an important case uh, for take. Um, because if I have an empty list, then I can't take the prefix of that, but I also don't error. This is the way that the real built-in take works. Okay, so that's our model. Um, let's put that in the comment there so we can continue to look at it. Whoops. Um, and let's move that up there. Great. And move this up here. Okay. So how am I going to do this on vectors? So first, this first thing can't just be an, an, an int anymore. It has to be a nat, but it can't just be a nat either because it's going to affect the length of the result vector. So this needs to be one of these s nats. So we have an s nat n, and now we're going to have a vector of some other length m. And to first approximation, let's just say that this returns a vector of length n. And let's see how this works. So if I take s0, then no matter what vector I'm passed in, I'm going to return nil. That works. We see OK one module loaded. We have some pattern match failures, some pattern match in, a, in exhaustivity, but that's OK. Um, so here this works out because I've said here this S0 tells me that n is really 0. And so I can return nil, and that's correct. Now if I take something else, if I take successor of some number n prime, and here, now if I have x cons x's, well, what do I want? Well, it's going to be x cons uh, what would be take n prime x's. Does that work? Yes, it does work. Everything is good here. And again, this is because the sort of the structure of my types is very similar to the structure of my term. So that's why this works out so nicely. Um, but what about this other case? There's still um, a pattern that's not matched. What if I have take of suck of n prime here, but nil? There's nothing wrong with that case. I want to return nil, but now I'm going to get errors. 
right? Because I've said that the resulting vector has to be the same length as this, or as to the length of this result vector has to be the size of my of my input s now. But that that's no good. So what I really need to do here is compute a minimum. So we need another type family. So once again, I'm going to give a signature. So this is just going to work on nats. We're not going to do any overloaded stuff, although we could. Um, so here, if I take min of AB, uh, now how do I define min on these natural numbers? So min of 0 and anything is just 0. Min of suck of something and 0 is just 0. And min of suck n and suck m is suck of min of n and m. Okay, now isn't this convenient that the structure of min happens to exactly match the structure of take? And so here, if I just change this to be min n m, then I think it will work. Oh, define but not use. Oh, that was the exact same problem I had earlier with lists. And then everything is good. Um, but, but again, we have to be careful. Min, even though we normally think of it as commutative, is not here. And I think if I switch these, I'm going to get an error. Yes. Um, so I could prove that min is commutative, and we will do that, in, or maybe I don't know, not min. We'll prove plus is commutative in a later, in a later video. Um, but here, once again, we have to be careful, and we get lucky that, maybe not so lucky, maybe I've contrived it this way a little bit, that the structure of min and the structure of take is, is, is very similar. Um, and so maybe drop, which also would have to have maybe that would be more difficult. Perhaps we'll pick up there next week, but I think we've had enough for today. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.